Hello, third graders, and welcome back to another session of learning how to tell time. So, um, yesterday we reviewed telling time to the nearest five minutes. So, I showed you some times on this analog clock, and you practiced telling time. Today we're going to do some more. Uh, we'll do a few more review problems of telling time to the nearest five minutes, and then we'll move on to telling time to the nearest minute. So, as I told you yesterday, remember um, the longer hand on a clock is our minute hand, and then that shorter hand on the clock is our hour hand. And that minute hand goes all the way around the clock in an hour. There are 60 minutes in an hour, so there's 60 little marks here that go all the way around in one hour. That hour hand moves only from one of these numbers to the next number in a whole hour. It moves a lot slower. Now, I told you yesterday that I was going to talk a little bit about this third hand that some clocks have. Now, it's kind of confusing because it's called the second hand, even though it's really the third hand on the clock. And the reason why it's called the second hand is because it moves around the clock every second. And like I said, not all clocks will show this because it's not really that important to necessarily know the exact time in seconds um, because every second changes so fast. But you may see this on some analog clocks, and I wanted you to be aware of that. So I'm going to show you something kind of cool on our, um, cl our virtual clock here. If I show the real time, I'm going to click on that. It'll show you the real time. I'm recording this at 9.14 p.m. Um, after my kids have gone to bed because it's the only time I can get these videos done. Um, anyway, so you'll see that this hand here, this blue one, our second hand, is moving around the clock so fast that you can actually see it moving because it's moving every second. Um, so like I said, pay attention when you see analog clocks if you have one at home or the next time you see one somewhere, um, check and see if it has a second hand. That is what that's for. And it's just kind of cool um, if you wanted to time something to see um, how long a minute, um, if you wanted to give yourself a minute to do something, you could use that as a way of timing yourself. So moving on, um, now that that second hand has moved all the way around, it is now exactly 9.15 p.m. because that hour hand is a little bit past the 9 and that minute hand is 15 minutes past the 9. 5, 10, 15 minutes. So, um, we're going to do a few examples. I'd like you to make sure you have a piece of paper and a pencil out or a dry erase board and a marker so that if I show you a time on your clock, you can, you can actually write it down. And I do want to remind you, because yesterday we didn't really talk about this, um, when you write down the time on a clock, um, there are different ways to show it, but the most common way is going to be, I'm going to show you right here, um, what it looks like. I'm going to turn this on. Okay, the most common way would be to write the hour first, and then these two dots here are, are a colon, that's a colon, and then the minutes. So right now it is 9 16 p.m. So 9 colon 16. And then down here they're showing you how many seconds, but we don't really write that usually when we're writing the time. Um, this is the most common way you'll see, and this you see all the time because you see digital clocks in your life all the time. So this is pretty common for you to see that. Okay, so I'm going to turn the real time off, and I'm going to build a time on my clock. And I want you to write down the time that it is. So I'm going to hide this so you can't see it. All right, let's see here. Let's try this time. Pause the video if you need to so that you can write down the time or figure it out and then press play um, so I can share the answer with you. Okay. This is 10.10 on the clock. The hour hand is not too far past the time because the minute hand is not gone that far past the hour. It's gone 10 minutes past 10 o'clock. Five minutes, 10 minutes. So 10, 10 is the time. And you can see right here that this is how you would show it. You would show 10 colon 10. These two little zeros down here at the bottom, you do not write. 
that tells us how many seconds it, um, it is, and we don't write that when we write the time, so please don't do that. Okay? All right. Let's try another one. I'd like you to write down this time. Oops. You saw it. I'll have to do a new one. Let's do this one. Pause the video so you can figure it out and write it down, and then unpause when you're ready to see the answer. Okay. This time is 10.45. And you can see that it's shown right here. Now, this is where it gets tricky. So when the minutes get closer and closer to that next hour, and they get, you know, like to the... Um, when the minute hand gets on to like the 8 and the 9 and the 10 and the 11, that hour hand moves closer and closer to the next hour. So a lot of times students might mistakenly think that it's 11 something when it's not yet because that hour hand has not quite gotten to the 11. So it's actually still 1045. It's almost 11 o'clock, but not yet. If you um, are a little bit confused about why, I'm going to go over that for you. So let's start by looking at what 10 o'clock would be. Here's 10 o'clock. If I move my minute hand around the clock, this is 10.05, 10.10, 10.15, 10.20, 10.25, 10.30, 10.35, 10.40, 10.45, 10.50, 10.60, 10.70, 10.80, 10.85, 10.90, 10.91, 10.92, 10.93, 10.94, 10.95
So 6.50 is the new time, is the time. Okay. Now we're going to practice telling time to the nearest minute. Okay. So let's use this one as an example since we already have 6.50 up here. If I just move my minute hand to this next little black tick mark that's right there, I've gone one minute further. So it was at 6.50 and I've gone one more minute past that. It's now 6.51. The reason why you, you have to figure that out on your own is because it would be way too difficult for a clock to have every number on it because there's so many and they're all so close together. So you have to be able to figure that out. Okay. Now, if I go just a little bit further, it's now 652 because this is 650. One more would be 651 and then that's 652. And I'm sure you guessed it that this next one would be 653, 654, and then there is 655. So let's do a few more examples. Let's see if you can try some of these um, yourself. So I'm going to build a time, and I want you to write down what time you think it is. Try that one. Pause the video. Okay. If you wrote down that it is 8.02, you are correct. So... The minute hand is two minutes past that hour, so it's 8.02. All right, let's try another one. We'll keep our hand. This one. Pause the video so you can figure it out and write down the time that you think it's showing. Okay. This time is 8.11. If the minute hand was right on the 2, it would have been 8.10 because the 2 shows 10 minutes past the hour. One more minute past that is 8.11. Now, a little trick here. As you get more and more comfortable telling time with an analog clock, you're going to start to memorize what number of minutes each of these numbers represents. So like at this point in my life, I don't need to stop and think about what the four represents. If I see the minute hand right on the four, I know that it's 20 after the hour. I just know it. I've memorized it at this point. If I see the minute hand on the seven, I just automatically know that it's 35 minutes past the hour. I don't have to count. 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. But as you're learning, you will. And the quicker you can memorize what each of those minutes represent, the easier it'll be for you to tell time with an analog clock. Um, so with using that trick, if I know that um, the number of minutes past the hour when the minute hand is on the 8 represents 40, then it's pretty simple for me to see that one minute after that is 41. I don't need to like count them again. I can just say, oh, the eight would have shown 40 minutes past the hour. So the little tick mark right past the eight would show me 41 minutes past the hour. Now, one thing that you can do if you have an analog clock at home, if your family gives you permission, of course, is sometimes um, like at school, when we were, if we were learning to tell time on our analog clock, I would actually put a little note, like a little post-it note above each of these numbers to show what, um, how many minutes past the hour they each represent. So like... Um, Above the like right next to the one, you could show that that's five minutes past the hour, and you could have a little note that shows that the two is 10 minutes past the hour, and the three has 15 minutes past the hour. Sometimes, if you keep that up on your analog clock for a little while, you start to memorize it more quickly, so you start to know what those numbers represent. That's something you could do at home if you have one. Okay, so um, today on your Google form, you're going to be telling time to the nearest minute. And I just want to share one more quick thing um, that we're not going to spend a lot of time on, but you may be kind of confused if you haven't talked about this much, is understanding the difference between a.m. and p.m. times. So um, 
because there are only 12 numbers on a clock, but there's actually 24 hours in a day, we have to use those same numbers for two different times during the day. So we have to like determine, like if it's eight o'clock, we have to figure out whether it's eight o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock at night. And so we use AM and PM to kind of, um, to tell the difference between those two. So AM refers to morning time and PM refers to usually like afternoon and evening time. Um, just know that when you hit 12 a.m., okay, yes, technically that's considered morning, but it's actually midnight, okay? And then, you know, 1 a.m. is in the middle of the night, and so is 2 a.m. and 3 and 4 a.m., and then you get to 5 and 6 a.m., and you start to get to early morning. Um, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., that's when we're waking up and going to school. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning is getting close to lunchtime. And then 12 p.m. is noon. And that's like when we typically usually eat lunch. It's the middle of the day. And then 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. are the afternoon. And then we get into the evening time, 5 p.m. and 6 p.m., 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. So we're not going to really spend a lot of time worrying about that, but I just want you to understand the difference between AM and PM. And when you see that or hear about that, that's what that means. Okay. So nice job. Good luck on your Google form. I will see you later. Bye boys and girls.